Welcome to another video showing the alpha version of Shade Light for SketchUp. In this video I'm going to show you the Shade Light Material Editor and some of its features. Shade Light works directly with SketchUp materials, except in Shade Light we have added increased functionality as we have recreated the SketchUp colours and textures and given them a selection of types and finishes to create a much more realistic render. Here I have a scene from 3D Warehouse. It already has some SketchUp colours and materials applied to the geometry. It also has some custom textures which will work fine with Shade Light and we'll look at these later in the video and we'll make some changes. Let's render this in Shade Light to see how it looks. I'm just going to select the Start Shade Light Rendering button. This launches the Shade Light Rendering window. And we can see that after a couple of seconds our model exports and then starts rendering progressively in Shade Light. The scene is rendering at 1280 by 720. The render window has scaled this to 50% so we can see the whole render. I'm able to use the zoom and pan functionality to see the render at 100%, so I'm going to zoom into the fruit bowl here. Another feature that we actually have is take a snapshot, and I'm going to take a snapshot of this scene now, as it is here, so that at the end we can go back to this and we can see how it looked at the beginning of our uh, video here. We can see that Shade Light has already applied the colours and textures from SketchUp. You don't need to do anything to apply new materials, the Shade Light automatically converts the SketchUp materials and textures once they are applied to the model. Let's open the Shade Light Material Editor. Here we go, so here's the Shade Light Material Editor here. And what it's just doing is it's uh, currently rendering the shadable for the selected material. So we can see we've got this uh, white colour zero here selected. When you add a material to objects in your scene, Shade Light automatically assigns an appropriate finish to create the most realistic rendering. If you want a different look, you can choose one of all the six alternative material types selected from this drop down menu here. So let's make some changes to the apples in our scene. So I'm just going to use the SketchUp material selector here and I'm going to select the apples. And we can see they just have a, a basic red colour applied to them. For SketchUp colours, the default is a matte finish. This means it will have no strong highlights or reflections. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to give the apple a satin finish. Satin materials show highlights from strong light sources, but they don't show any reflections of surrounding objects. There are nine finishes available here. So at the moment we've selected a low satin, which is very nearly matte. And our material ball here it shows no real highlights. So I'm going to choose a high one here, so I'm going to have a, a more satin finish and a stronger highlight. And we can see our material ball is updated. And we can also see as we're rendering progressively here that our uh, apples are now updating. And we can see we've got our highlight from our light source in SketchUp here. Okay, let's now make some changes to the oranges. I'm going to do something a little different with the oranges, because at the moment they just have an orange colour applied to them. But we've actually recreated all of the materials as well in SketchUp. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to select an asphalt and concrete and I'm going to select the asphalt here. And I'm actually going to apply this to the oranges in my scene. Now the reason that I'm doing this is we can probably start to see in our shader ball here that the asphalt actually has a texture on it. When we've created the asphalt, we've given it a bump map so that it's going to have realistic textures and shadow bumps on the uh, material. Now, this has given this to the orange, so we've now got a texture on the orange. But what I need to do here is change the colour. So I'm going to go in the colour wheel and I'm going to select the orange colour here. And I'm just going to brighten that up so we get a bit more realistic orange colour. And we can now see that uh, in our shade light window, we're now rendering our oranges here. Now, to get an idea of how this is going to look, our shader ball has rendered already here, and we can see that we now have a subtle texture onto the shader ball, and this is how our oranges are actually going to look. So it just gives it that little more realism. It's just one way of doing it. So I'm also going to give these a satin finish, and uh, we'll go for the same as the apples there. So while this is rendering, we can now see that we have our uh, highlights from our lights there. So the next change I'm going to make while this is rendering is actually in the fruit bowl. So I'm going to use the material selector here and I'm going to select the fruit bowl. And at the moment this is just that white colour that we had selected earlier. 
So I'm now going to give this a shiny finish. Shiny materials show highlights from lights and also reflect surrounding objects. We have 10 finishes available in here. And we have from a dull finish, which we've got at the moment, where reflections are only just visible. We've got up to highly polished, and we also have a mirror finish as well. But I'm just going to select one of the, the highly polished ones here. We can now start to see that we're getting reflections from objects in the table. So we can see uh, the plate and the mat reflecting here, and uh, around the side here. But we'll be able to see those towards the end when we render this fully. So I'm going to use a zoom and pan down here and I'm going to look at the cutlery option. So again, I'm just going to select the material using the SketchUp material selector. And we've just got this material here called Gainsborough. And at the moment, this is just a, a color. So again, we, we just have a matte finish to it at the moment. And on here, I'm going to select a uh, metal finish. Highlights and reflections in metal materials are affected by the base color of the metal. So I've just selected this uh, brushed here, so it's a fairly matte metal, but I'm gonna go all the way to chrome on this one. Now we can see as that starts to render, we've still got fairly gray reflections in this one. That's because our SketchUp environment is uh, just the plain gray. We can see it in the background here. Now, if you use a lighting environment that you may have seen in one of our other videos, you would get more realistic reflections in here. But as this is starting to render in, we can see re reflections coming up in the fork here. And, uh, you know, that they will get better and better as the rendering continues. But while this is still rendering, I'm now going to make some changes to the glass here. So again, I'm just going to select the, uh, the glass. And at the moment, this is set to the opacity level is set to 50%. So I'm just going to get this round to round 10. So there we go, 11, that's fine. Okay, go back to our materials there. And I'm now going to give this one of our transparent finishes here. Now for the transparent materials to work, the opacity must be less than 100 for any effect to be seen. But you saw I just turned that down to 11 earlier. Now we can see the differences here. At the moment, the thin glass that we have selected has got realistic reflections, but the light is passing straight through without refracting. This is just the setting that we have for thin glass, so this is useful for sort of windows. So if I select a thick glass option here, this now causes the light to refract much more through the layers of glass. Now diamond and liquid, they're going to cause a lot more refractions and that wouldn't look uh, very realistic on our glass here. Okay, so another change that I'm just going to make here is if I go over to the jug. And for the jug, I'm just going to select uh, the material here. I'm going to give this a glossy material. Now, glossy material is a lot like shiny. It will give reflections of lights and other objects in the scene, but they'll actually be blurry reflections. Now, as a word of warning, because these are blurry reflections, it does take a, a little more power to render, so it can slow things down. So uh, I'd recommend doing this sort of towards the end, but uh, I'm just gonna choose reflective two here, so it's gonna be pretty reflective. And as this refines, we can start to see reflections of objects in here, but these will remain blurry. Now it's worth mentioning that the further the objects are away, the blurrier they will get. So it does give quite a realistic effect. Okay, so the last change I'm gonna make on here, we mentioned earlier regarding the custom textures. Now the table here, if I select this uh, table finish, and this just has a custom texture that um, the person that created this scene has, uh, has loaded. Um, but we've just, get, again, given it the auto matte finish on here. But I can give this the material finishes just like I have with all the others. So I'm just going to choose a shiny finish. And I'm gonna, just going to go for a fairly dull shine on this one. Now, this is enough and we can start to see here that we're actually starting to get our reflections from the bowl in the table. And we can see down that side as well. It's just one of those subtle details that really does help with the scene. So while this is rendering, I'm just going to expand uh, the shade light window here. 
and there we go we can see our scene now with all our materials in and uh, you know we've got our satin highlights in our uh, fruit and the shiny bowl and the glossy jug there we could certainly now see more but the reflections that we're getting in there the blurriness and our chrome cutlery now if you remember earlier we took a snapshot of when we first started this and uh, we can now compare the difference between the two scenes so there's uh there's our scene with sort of no reflections there and uh, we can see that we've made quite a lot of changes to sort of the glass and the tables and a lot of the finer details that really helps with the rendering so this is just coming to an end of the rendering so uh, that won't it won't take much longer but I hope you've enjoyed this video showing the materials in the alpha version of Shade Light for SketchUp. And I look forward to showing you another video soon.